we, our uh, philosophy is that the quality of all learners is at stake, and that includes children with disadvantages, migrant, uh, talented and gifted, the whole spectrum of uh, needs. And, and I think to start with, I want to make clear that we all differ. Uh, and, and it is problematic to say to a person, you differ a bit too much, so you don't belong to us. You should go elsewhere. And that is the, 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 the thesis that we fight. We, our basic assumption is that we all differ and we are all equal. To uh, emphasize this again is that all learners of any age, that is our vision, should be provided with meaningful high quality education in their local community alongside their peers. We divide three main uh, levels that should be taken uh, care of when talking about inclusive education. That is legislation, of course, and that legislation should be clear on the goal of uh, inclusive education and, and uh, equitable educational opportunities. And then there should be a clear policy. It's not only for educators, but all decision makers who are all the stakeholders in the uh, situation and then of course operational structures and processes the council recommendations of, of 22nd of may uh, last year were and that's from the council of europe was very strong on the area of inclusive education as one of its main priorities of the uh, eu and and we were very happy that they mentioned us in the council resolution in the recommendation by saying make effective use of this agency because they have the knowledge. I think that I should add here that our focus is in our organization we have left the discussion what is inclusive education exactly. And we have also left the debate, we skipped the debate, why is it needed? Our focus is how can you implement inclusive education? So the uh, in many countries, people would like to spend hours de debating what inclusive education exactly is and definitions and uh, conceptual frameworks and operational frameworks. We, we said, let's now look at the how of inclusive education. We are not only looking at policy, but also in research and practice. We all try to combine those three um, parts of the, of the debate. And uh, uh, we try to create a platform for peer learning. Uh, what we don't want to do is to compare countries too much. We, we are not a Eurovision Song Contest. And uh, what we try to do is learning from each other. Uh, so uh, we think that the best way of improving things is, is to learn from each other, look over each other's shoulder. So all our activities uh, are in line with the European Council priorities, but also, and I think that's an important uh, uh, point to mention with the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. What we want to do is look at policies of member countries and say, well, uh, this could be done in another way, which is more in line with <clears throat> the UN Convention and, and European uh, Council resolutions. We do thematic projects on various areas uh, from uh, early childhood intervention to uh, transition questions and so on. Uh, one of the <clears throat> recent initiatives we do is the country policy review and analysis is we and Hungary is involved was involved in that one too to look at the uh, legislation and uh, policy and to give feedback about um, how the policy and legislation is constructed and therefore we use what we call the PIC model model P is prevention E, I is intervention and C is compensation. And of course, if a legislation has a lot of compensatory uh, interventions, that is less good than if legislation is a lot focused on prevention uh, in, in, in their legislation. So we give feedback to countries where they are in terms of prevention, intervention and, and compensation in their legislation. We also have a, a huge data bank uh, on statistics in uh, European countries. Uh, have a look at our website, it's called the EASY website. We assist countries now actively in changing their legislation. So we are now currently busy in Poland and Cyprus to look at the current legislation and to move it in a way that is more inclusive. In 19, just now we have uh, 
had requests from Greece and Czech Republic also to uh, analyze existing uh, weaknesses in the system and also strength and to give priority actions advice to them. What we do is, of course, uh, trying to listen to all stakeholders in our work. It's not top-down, we know what you should do, we also listen to, to, to learners. We have held four big hearings in the past years where we gathered learners with sometimes very severe disabilities to express their wishes and views and uh, future um, demands to policymakers directly, to ministers, to EU officials, to other, to us. And they say inclusive education is basically a human right discussion. It's not about so much about evidence, uh, it, it's not about other, it is a human right debate. It starts with a mindset that it's everybody's right to belong. And that's their message. And they said, of course, we need teachers who have the skills, competences and, and resources and attitudes, but it should be in the inclusive setting. The question is, how do we cope with diversity in the classroom? And that's a school organizational question. It's not a, only a classroom question, it is a curriculum question, and a school organization question and teacher training issue. So to conclude, inclusion is a human right. Belonging is key. Belonging, is, I, I haven't spent much words to it, but if you belong, you feel better. You learn better and your, uh, you your uh, self-being, your well-being is, is better. If you don't belong, you have a, an issue because you want to belong. Heterogeneous grouping is the only way forward. If the more homogeneous classrooms we have, the more issues we will see long-term with children who fail. Finance inclusion and not segregation. To special education schools, I say you do a good job, but at the wrong place. Bring services to the child in his classroom and not child to the services. We believe that inclusive education does at the end lead to more democratic and fair societies because we are used to have differences in our environment. We, we get tolerance, we learn from each other and as you can see I'm quite passionate about this but inclusive education is also about passion because it's about human rights. I'm here the speaker but I don't feel myself more as you we are equal and all different. And that's something we should celebrate and not try to categorize. Thank you very much.